Everyone knows about the classic Fortify Restoration loop in Skyrim, boosting your alchemy and your enchanting skills to the point that they can crash the game. It is fun, but I thought, what if we make the most powerful weapon that Todd Howard intended us to be able to make? And of course, I'm not just going to tell you how powerful it is, that would be boring, no. We're going to take this weapon and fight a legendary dragon on legendary difficulty. Now of course, you can use alchemy without exploiting the game, but for the purposes of this video, we will not be using any any potions at all, but feel free to add them in if you feel so inclined. Also just a side note, but all the mods you see in this video are purely visual and don't change anything we're doing. You can do all of this 100% vanilla. Now let's get on to the setup. Before we do anything, there are certain perks, items and skills you will need. Number one is of course enchanting. You will need everything on the middle and left branches, and a skill of 100. You will also need smithing and all the perks up to ebony smithing with a skill level of 100. Lastly, you're going to need at least 60 in Destruction and all 6 of the Augment perks, as these also apply to Elemental enchantments which we will be using. Of course, get whatever weapon type you plan on using category up to 100 as well. Personally, I will be using a Greatsword, so I will need 100 in two-handed. As for items, you are going to need a nice collection of max level soul gems, so anything with a grand soul. You're also going to need 6 pieces of Star Rim and 3 leather strips. Next, you're going to need any unenchanted chest piece, ring, necklace, and gauntlets. Now, there is a choice to be made here. There is a glitch with two pieces of armor, the Moth Priest sandals and the Dunmer shoes, that lets them receive chest piece enchantments. This isn't intended, so I won't be doing it in the video, but feel free to do it yourselves. You will also need the Notched Pickaxe, the Black Book, the Sallow Regent, and four pieces of Azadal's armor. Oh, and you'll probably want to be on Saltstein. We'll be using that Black Book a few times, so it's far more convenient. Got all that? Good, then let's get started. First up, we need to make our smithing armor, so get your random unenchanted gear ready. First things first, open up the black book and select Seeker of Sorcery. This will fortify your enchanting by 10%. Now you need to equip Azadal's armor, which will give you the Azadal's genius perk, giving you another 10 levels of enchanting. And now, you can start enchanting. These perks combined should give each piece a 30% smithing boost. Now of course equip the items you have just made as well as the Notch Pickaxe and read the Black Book once again, this time selecting Seeker of Might to boost your smithing by 10%. And now we can finally craft our weapon, and you're going to need to craft a Star Rim weapon. We'll come to why in a little bit. Once that is done, head over to the Grindstone and make that weapon legendary. Now it's back to Azadol's armor and the Seeker of Sorcery effect. Then you're going to want to get this weapon Frost Damage and Chaos Damage. It is important the Frost Damage goes on first, as Star Rim weapons gain 10% extra Frost Damage, and you lose this if you put it on second. But more importantly, it boosts the second enchantment too, as it also contains frost damage. Now as you can see, it says that there is a 50% chance for each element to do 246 points of damage. What this means is that on top of the flat 158 frost damage, you have the potential to do 246 points of frost, fire, and shock damage at the same time, which adds up to 896 points of damage, and that is without taking into account the weapon itself. If we take just the base power of the weapon we see here, we are now doing potentially 1 1049 damage per swing. What you can do now is go back and select Secret of Might once again, which gives you a nice 10% damage boost on the weapon itself. And now we arrive at the Legendary Dragon fight on Legendary Difficulty. I have given myself a ridiculous amount of health for this fight, as this is about the weapon damage not surviving. And as you can see, he's dead in just two dragon rends in under one minute. 
and that is without any two-handed boosting effects. As you can see, if I use my regular gear here, it goes from 168 to 491 damage. This thing really is no slouch, and all of this was done without a single potion or point of alchemy investment. And that is a wrap. I really hope you enjoyed this one. I think it's probably my best guide I've ever done, so if you did, then be sure to leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss any future content.